What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Medica 2 Expert. <laughs> that was really close. Uh, yeah, so last episode, we set up our Void Ore Miner Tier 2. Yep, we got that thing cooking over here. And then we started giving it power, and I was like, why is it not using all the power that our Extreme Reactor is generating? Yeah, the problem is, well, I guess it's not really a problem, but the reason was... Uh, the redstone conduit that we had going here is limited to 20,000 RF per tick or whatever it is, redstone energy conduit. What is it? 18,000. Yeah. So we were starving our tier two void or miner over here of power. It was not able to go at full speed. Mm -hmm. So that's why a reactor that was making less than what this thing requires was making power. So anyway, as you can see over here, I do have these cryostabilized flux ducts. We got like a stack of those as a reward. I have that running all the way down over to the connection where the reactor is down here. And then the rest of the base is just a standard redstone energy flux duct. So yeah, we are now giving this thing full power, which is pretty cool. It is using 31,470 RF per tick in every... Uh, four seconds, we are getting something new in our chest here, whether it be one or two different ores. You can see right now our cryo knight, we have over, well, we have almost a stack and a half of cryo knight now, which is pretty awesome. But yeah, I'm just laying this around. We're just collecting ores. Um, off camera, I did expand out our reactor just a little bit more. Let me pop down here. So previously, it was kind of floating. Yep, that was the bottom of it. I brought it down two more blocks, so... Yeah, our reactor is a bit taller now. I brought it down two more blocks, and we can produce, I think it's 41,000 RF per tick now, which is pretty good. That's enough to keep our laser over here very, very happy, our void orb miner. Yep, so we're able to keep that happy. We're able to produce power for the rest of the base. Uh, we are using a bit more power, though. Uh, I just cleaned this out, the cyanide in here, just a little bit ago, and now we've got a stack plus 11 in there. Whew. Yeah, we are chewing through power quite quickly. Um, so you can see right here we're making 40, about 47.1, I think, when it's at maximum is what we're doing. Uh, maybe 0.2. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. We're making 47,000. So yeah, this thing is going up to 70%. It turns off. It goes down to 30%. I kind of modified the program a little bit, so it kind of has like a smaller buffer to balance between but yep we are keeping up with the power just fine but we are chewing through our uranium yep got to keep an eye on this thing so we don't run out of fuel that'll kind of suck if we do uh, i also went on a mining trip down below i noticed that we were almost out of redstone like we literally had less than 100 redstone maybe less than 50. Uh, we now have 524 blocks of the stuff i was using the scanner this thing I made a new uh, scanner module block. Yeah, configured block redstone ore. Uh, I made the mistake of just right clicking this on a piece of redstone ore. And if you just right click on it without holding shift and right clicking on it, it turns it into an active, like the glowing redstone ore block. And that's the only thing the scanner will search for. So you need to have the unglowing version of the redstone ore. Like you place one down, then you shift right click on it. Uh, as you're configuring this block, or I guess this module thing, you shift right click holding this. Yep, and then I'll recognize that you are looking for all the redstone, not just the active one. So yeah, I went down into our mine down below. You can see like these big sections here. Those are the ones that contain huge amounts of redstone ore. So I went after one of those and I got over 2,000 individual pieces of redstone from one of those. So yeah, we are doing pretty good on the redstone ore situation. Okay. So things that I want to do, I would like to take our currently harvested ores, or our, I guess our smelted ores, these things, our blocks, be able to put them into compacting drawers and have the ingots available as well as the nuggets in the cases that we need that. So that's one of the things I'd like to do today. So let's take a look at compacting drawer. We're gonna have to make a bunch of these things. So those are just a regular drawer, some stone and pistons not so bad like that's the default recipe let's go ahead and make a recipe for this now we're gonna have to make a recipe to make drawers we do have some in here but we don't have enough um let's do well 
this one is the one I wanted. Let's make a recipe for that guy. Okay. Oh yeah, you can't. <laughs> if you pull out of the pattern terminal and you already have the item in your system here, it doesn't craft it. It just pulls the item from your inventory. It's kind of a weird thing. Uh, I was gonna craft when I put it in here. I was like, wait, we just took one out. Anyway, uh, so we have the way to make the drawers. We have a way to make a compacting drawer. We do need a way to make pistons. Now this is a thing that we need to start worrying about. I uh, bookmarked the material stonework factory here, I think last episode of the episode before, because I kind of wanted to get some other things going, but it seems like using one of those for making cobblestone and putting it into a compacting drawer is gonna make sense because we are gonna need a lot of cobblestone. Uh, I kind of wanted to uh, make a few of these things so we can have one making cobblestone, we can have one making gravel, one making sand, and of course one making glass. So I'd like to have at least four of those. I think you can also set this up in such a way that it just produces the silicon, I think. Anyway, so yeah, I wanted to make a few of these things and put them into a better spot, or I guess a more permanent spot. So how are we doing on cobblestone at this point? We have double compressed, that's actually pretty good. So we'll turn that into compressed cobblestone. Yeah. So how many compressed? 243. We are sitting pretty good on that. Okay, so we are able to make that. We can do iron, nickel, aluminum, lead, silver, tin, or copper. I feel like aluminum is probably what we want to use. Let's see. Aluminum. Yeah, we have 619 blocks of aluminum, and we don't really use aluminum for a lot of stuff. Let's go ahead and do that for a recipe for pistons. Okay, so moving over here, pistons, we'll do this. And we gotta swap that out for an aluminum plate. So I'll craft one of those, put that here, and then we'll make the pattern using aluminum plates. Awesome. All right, so we should have pretty much everything together now. Piston, drawer, and this. So if I wanna make compacting drawer, and if I wanna make, I don't know, 20 of them. Okay, so we have everything except for redstone, which of course, we need to unblockify now. We should be good. So compacting drawer. Let's make 20. Looks like we have everything. Let's do it. That should craft up fairly quickly. Our auto crafting is definitely in a better situation than where it was when we first started. That's not bad. Uh, we're also going to need a drawer controller. So this guy requires redstone engineering blocks. We have one. We have to make another, and that is Constantin. We have Constantin. Okay, so Constantin is a thing that we are gonna have to craft and we can do that in the induction smelter using nickel and copper. I don't think they have to be pulverized. I think it can be both ingots. Let's scroll over. So we can do a pulverized nickel plus a copper ingot. We can do two pulverized, one nickel. Yeah, I don't think they both have to be pulverized. Let's take a look, nickel and copper. I am going to make a, or I'm going to start a recipe with this real quick. Let's throw that into the induction smelter here and make sure this works. Oh yeah, that seems to work just fine. All right, so we are making Constantin. Wait, did I not just craft that? Where did the items go that I just made? Uh, what? <laughs> So, oh, you know what? They are in the crafting terminal over here. I was like, we should have more than two in the system. Yeah, it's because they were in this crafting terminal. Okay, so this recipe is valid. So we can place that here and then we can put that over here. We can now make Constantin and Electrum. That's pretty cool. All right, so if we come over and tell it to craft this, we should have everything set up for that. I'm pretty sure everything is. We have copper plates. No, we don't have copper plates. Okay, so we need to make a recipe for that. Uh, clear that out. This guy will make a plate. Like so. And now we should pretty much have everything good to go. Man, we got so many different plates that we're making here. Okay, let's put this guy in here. Okay, so we wanted to make redstone engineering block next. We have everything. Do it. Very good, all right, auto crafting is working for us very nicely. All right, so now we just need to make a drawer. Got one, and there is our drawer controller plus our compacting drawers, very good. So the drawer controller should allow us to be able to see any drawers that are touching 
12 blocks away in any direction up down left right whatever right uh so this is going to be pretty good so with this drawer controller we're going to want to get ourselves an enemy storage bus so applied energistics can see this and this can see all the things attached to it okay so we want the enemy storage bus so we need to make two pistons very good and oh one of them does have to be a sticky piston i thought that was optional okay so we have one sticky piston then we need to make an interface and craft 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 just a few more seconds waiting on this pure certus quartz crystal yeah where's the other piston there it is okay so now we have that uh we are going to want emmy glass cable and get this thing completely hooked up to our system down below uh, advancement made limitless potential i was thinking we were going to stick it in the wall over here but we kind of have like these cables all over the place which is unfortunate um yeah i don't know how i want to get this thing hooked up maybe we can put the drawers like over here and then we can put some on the other side that might work okay well i'm gonna start putting drawers around how big is this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so we got about 15 yeah maybe we'll put the drawer controller right around here and just start surrounding the wall with the drawers. I think that'll work just fine. Anyway, let me get to this. I'll place some blocks and we'll be back, guys. All right, guys. So we got ourselves all of our drawers hooked up down here. I did go ahead and make ourselves a drawer key that will lock and unlock drawers. This way, random items won't go in here. The only thing that will go in there is what we manually put in there the first time. And then it's available for items to go in. And then the concealment key, this is to remove the rendering of the items that we put in there just to reduce frame rate lag uh so since we want items that we're putting in here to go in here first we need to set this priority high so i'll just set it to 100 uh that's the highest priority on the network right now so anything that can go in these that we put into our applied energistic system will be going to these drawers first okay so what i need to do at this point is start grabbing all of our different ores that we have up here so something like iron let's grab all well let's first of all blockify it all just so we can take it down as quickly as possible block of iron and grab all of these there we go all right so now we don't have any iron in the system and i will yeah let's just put it right here so all the irons right there plus our eight ingots so now we have nuggets blocks and ingots available let's come up here and take a look and make sure everything happened correctly and everything displays properly here so iron if we look at iron yeah we can see 66,000 iron nuggets 7,415 of the ingots and the blocks so when i take out the ingots 823 that updates to 816 if i put that back in there then that updates yeah that's all working correctly i like it Okay, so now that we have that done, I need to do the rest of that with the rest of our blocks. Yeah, all of these different things that, well, I guess all the ones that can convert into blocks we need to do that with. So let me get to that, and then we'll be back, guys. Well, that took a few more compacting drawers than I originally thought it was going to take. Yeah, uh, so we got pretty much every single block in here, pretty much. At least all the ones that we have discovered and we can use at this point. Uh, we got our glowstone in here, finally, our redstone, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, pretty much a lot of different things we have going on in here. Even the uh, mineral, which probably isn't that necessary, and then black quartz as well. But anyway, uh, I think right now what I'd like to do is continue on and work towards this material stonework factory thing. So in order to make this, we need at least three more machine keys since we already have a material stonework factory. Oh yeah, we can now see all these different nuggets in the system. Yeah, this is really good. We have all these different versions of our resources available now. So anyway, we wanted to make the machine case. Machine case, we need three more of those. And it looks like we have everything available to auto craft. Oh my goodness, that is really awesome. When things just come together like this, you can just say, all right, craft a whole bunch of this really complicated thing and then it just all happens automatically. Yep, yeah, one of my favorite parts of modded Minecraft, I would say. So now it's got to do the 
advanced alloys, the dense tin plates. Okay, yeah, that's probably the longest part. And, you know, I said a while ago that I want to switch this over from tin plates to, I think, aluminum. So that's something else we should be working on uh, switching over before we use too much of our tin. We go take a look at our tin right now. We only got 55 blocks of it. Now, we can sift for it, but that's super annoying to have to do that constantly all the time. Anyway, uh, so the machine case. Yep, those three are now done. Very good. So how much of this do we have? Furnace. We have a whole bunch of furnaces. That's awesome. We need to make three of these iron pickaxes. So we need some sticks here. Let's craft up, well, I don't know, 20 is probably more than enough. Just get some extras. Okay, uh, so we need crafting tables. We know we got those on auto craft. Three of those should be fine. And lava bucket, water bucket. That's probably gonna be the hardest part here. So I can grab lava and water. We'll have to do each one of those manually, but that's fine. And then pink slime. How are we doing on that? We got plenty. Okay, so lava we got over here. And then water. We have infinite waters around here somewhere. I guess they're all in here now. I've kind of cleaned up the base just a little bit. Taken things away that I don't necessarily need out anymore. Whoa. I went to go right click that and like immediately place it on the ground. That was weird. Okay, well, anyway, there's one material stonework factory. If I do that again. Oh, yeah. Right clicking on that just like fills up the bucket and immediately places it. That's really weird. It actually kind of sucks, to be honest. All right, there's two, and then we'll do that again. Okay, so if you got a stack of buckets, it doesn't do that. If you got a single bucket, it does it. That's really weird. And there we go. Last one, lava water. Boom. Very, very good. You know what? I'm going to keep a full bucket of water on me and all that stuff can go away we need to place this torch down before we get baddies spawning in here i think that goes about right there that looks right and it looks like we also lost another torch right here all right let's get rid of this thing cool all right so now that we got the material stonework factories i do need to make myself three more compacting drawers hey you know what i did check this out earlier i searched for a drawer because i want to make one of those and i saw that we had a drawer controller so apparently a while ago, we got another drawer controller as a reward. Yeah. So, well, I know we're going to have more than one drawer controller. Probably another one for mob drops at a, some point down the road. So we have that already sorted. That's pretty cool. Uh, so compacting drawer, this thing we want to add over here. Yeah, I think we're going to put the material stonework factories like uh, hidden under here somewhere. So we're going to want four of these. We'll just place them like this. Material stonework factories will go down here. That'll be just fine. We'll have to figure out how we're going to run power over to them as well. And then we're going to want these guys, these compacting drawers, to accept those items. So we're already getting um, gravel. I think gravel is going to go right here. So I will leave that spot blank. These guys we can place under here. We're going to have to figure out how we're going to extract the item into their drawers i don't know if there's an ejector upgrade for these i don't think they automatically push so we'll have to probably get pipes or something to do that uh and then we're gonna want the upgrades for these as well okay well let me get the one our cobble no not cobble gravel one that we got going over here we'll move that down below as well we got plenty of gravel mm -hmm. let me do that and we'll be back guys Okay, so we got the material stonework factories in place. They're all set. They have the appropriate things. We just want glass out of this one, sand out of that one. We want gravel and finally cobblestone, right? So we need to pipe out of these things into the back of these blocks, or we can move these down one block further and pipe straight up, whatever we want to do. But I figured we'll just pipe from the back in, or yeah, out of the back of this into the back of these. Um, so... I was kind of looking around at different options for moving items. And believe it or not, uh, conduits from Ender.io, yeah, these guys, the item conduit, these are available for us to make at this point in time. I was thinking we would have to get into Ender.io before we gave a mess with this stuff, but if we look at the pulsating iron nuggets, they come from the ingots, and the ingots can be made in the induction smelter with an iron and an ender pearl. So yes, we can make pulsating iron for the item conduit and the conduit binder is smelted conduit binder composite, which is just made out of gravel, sand, and clay. 
Okay, so we can do all of that stuff. That is very, very easy. So I guess the first step is we need to make ourselves uh, iron and ender, whoops, ender pearl. Let's make a recipe for this because I can only imagine that we are going to need these in the future. So there's that one and that one. And then we'll put that into here. Just, I guess we'll do a full bunch of those. Okay, and that's making, I can't remember the name of it, pulsating iron. Pulsating iron. Okay. I think that just makes one at a time. So I'll do that. And I can place that recipe over here. Very good. Actually, let me double check that. Does it only make one at a time? One, one, one. Yeah, okay. So now we have the ability of making that whenever we want to. And then pulsating iron, we could um, put into a compacting drawer. I don't think we're going to do that just yet. I'll just turn them all into nuggets for now. And then we can make a recipe for this. We got to change this around like so. Ender ingot. Oh, weird. Okay. I guess that combination has two different recipes, but one in the induction smelter makes the pulsating iron. So then we need the conduit binder, which comes from the composite this stuff can we craft that very good we can and then we need to smelt that so we'll make a pattern clear that out one of those is going to turn into two okay conduit binder and there we go we can put that into our redstone furnace here really that's the first redstone furnace recipe we've made all right so now that we have that we can make um oh we already have the pattern down here so yeah, we can put all that stuff into here. It's all the way down at the bottom is just fine. And then we can do item conduit. Awesome. These are like the best way to move items around, generally speaking, in my opinion. And then we're gonna want the upgrade. So ender upgrade these guys. So that requires a piston, electrical steel, and then iron. Electrical steel, is that something we can craft? Oh, yes it is. So silicon plus steel. Does it have to be? Nope. So silicon plus steel. All right. So silicon plus steel. Very good. Whoops. I need these things. That's silly silicon. So that'll make electrical steel. That's awesome. Okay. So electrical steel. I'll place that right into here. And again, that goes into our induction smelter. Now we can craft those all day long. All right, so now that that's done, we can make a recipe to make these guys. I really don't know how many of these upgrades we're going to need at the exact moment. Let's make, oh, I don't know. How about eight? We'll put two upgrades in each one of these conduits. Uh, so upgrade these. Let's make eight. So we are missing iron alloy ingot. Wait, did I put the wrong one in there? I must have put the wrong thing. because I'm pretty sure it said that iron works in there just fine. Oh, yeah, I did. I didn't even notice. All right, so we'll change that recipe out now, which should be valid. And upgrade. We wanted eight of those. Okay, that's just going to take a minute for it to craft everything here. Yeah, we're just waiting that electrical steel. So we've already made like half of them already. That's really awesome. Yeah, even though the induction smelter portion of this is a little slow, like it still makes them in a relatively quick speed i like it okay so we're probably also going to want to get ourselves uh what's it called a get a wrench i don't remember can we disconnect using a regular thermal expansion wrench does that work oh it does perfect okay so we don't need the get a wrench just yet when we get further into ender io i'm sure we will want that so that's going to be insert only insert only Insert and insert and of course we want to change these things. So each one of these different slots has a different color So we're only gonna be pulling cobblestone out of there. That's fine We can just say always active and put two of these things in here and that should be extracting out Yeah, that looks like that is working just fine and we're keeping up very good So this one we only want gravel to be extracted out. So that's out of the blue slots so We want to disable all of yellow so only blue can get pulled out, all right? So now we can do always active and put two of those in there, and then this should be increasing. Yep, looks like everything is going fine here. This one is sand, so we want to do the same thing. 
turn all these other ones off and yellow okay extract always active two of those and we should be getting sand into this one looks like everything is working correctly and then finally our glass production so uh, of course the green gets all turned off I wish there was a way we could do it with one click but I don't think you can that all gets turned off in this one I mean, honestly, we'd only have to turn the back off on these, but might as well just disable all the other ones. Only thing we ever want is just glass out of this particular unit. All right, and then we can do always active and put those in there. Cool. So now everything should be working. We should be collecting all sorts of glass. We should be making sand all the time. Although we're making it quite slowly. Yeah, well... It's not going like super fast, but we are now automatically collecting these resources and we never have to worry about them again. Is there compressed sand? Yeah, that'd be better having compressed sand as opposed to having it turn into sandstone. I'm probably gonna change this. In fact, we should probably do that now. Let's uh, destroy this. Mm, actually, I need to place this down. I need to put the sandstone in here and convert that all into sand oh man that's a lot of sand that we just got all right now i need to go and turn that into a compressed sand so i can place that into the drawer all right compressed sand if you just put sand directly in there it turns it into sandstone uh so let's see that's the number okay so we want this one right here so sand compressed sand double compressed sand yep i think that's what we want and then i should also grab a cardboard whoops Grab a cardboard box so we can move that drawer around and then we need the key so we can lock the drawer. Awesome. All right. So that is all we needed to do here. Very good. So we are now collecting sand and it's turning into compressed sand and then double compressed sand. Now, the reason why I wanted to do that is because we, for one, we don't really have a need for uh, the sandstone and for another, it converts this one item into 81 of these. But I guess one of these turns into 81 of those. So yeah, it's like way more efficient to be able to store the double compressed sand. You can hold a lot more of the item in there. Okay, I think we are pretty much good. And yeah, I'm noticing right here, I'm doing a compacting drawer for glass. We should swap that out for a regular drawer. There is no reason to have a compacting drawer for glass. Uh, especially since I can only hold 16 stacks. So let's do a drawer. I don't know why I did a, uh, a compacting drawer there. But I did, so we will swap that one out. Like so, this one goes right here. And then we'll place all this glass in there. Yep, that can hold a lot more of the glass. So lock that, lock that. I think we're good to go now, awesome. So the ability to have all those resources on hand and not have to make crafting recipes for each and every one of those to turn them into blocks and a, nuggets into ingots like that is going to be really really helpful now i was just kind of looking at our supply here of uranium yeah so we've gone through a little over two stacks now since the last time we looked at that yeah quite a lot of uranium is being put into this guy but we have created a lot of resources here we now have almost three and a half stacks of the cryonite which is pretty good I'm thinking we should probably swap over to the magenta laser to focus on getting the iridium or erodium, sorry, not iridium, erodium. And then we can put the green laser lens in, get more litharite, and that'll also help us get some more of the uranium ore. So that might be something that we look at doing. In fact, I'm gonna swap to the magenta laser now because I don't think we need any more of that cryonite at the moment. I'll place that guy down there. Yep, I think we should be just good. Uh, so we should be focusing on getting more of the erodium going forward, which I think that'll help us out overall. But yeah, we've collected a lot of resources here. This is really nice. Uh, I would like to start getting these to dump into our applied energistic system so we don't have to have a chest here. Everything we collect, I would like to just go on to our digital storage. That'll be something that we do in the future, I am sure. But anyway, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up the episode for today. We've got some good stuff going on. Always getting our storage in order is a thing that I like to do, and it's going to be very helpful for us going forward. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.